Hi everyone, I'm in my office here and you can see my setup. I have two monitors. Now, the thing is, with monitors you can change the brightness and you can have it maximum brightness or minimum brightness. And the reason for that is because if you're working in the dark, you don't want the glare. Like if you're working in the dark, you want your monitors to be low so that it doesn't hurt your eyes. But the problem is if you're working in bright conditions, like if it's sunny outside, like it is right now, um, or it's in a bright environment, then you don't want them to be too dark. You want the monitor to be bright so that you can you can actually read them. Uh, a bit like a, a mobile phone screen. When you're in the sun, you need it to be really bright, otherwise you can't see it properly. Uh, but that being said, at night time, you don't want it to be really bright so that it makes your eyes feel funny. Anyway, this is a big deal for me because I use these monitors all day, or can do anyway, all day and all night. And um, it's a pain to have to readjust the, the brightness. Because if I was to work one night and I've got the lights adjusted in here or whatever, I would want the monitors to be dim, low brightness. But in the daytime, I need the monitors to be high brightness so that it's comfortable. And it was a real pain in the bum to try to change the brightness all the time. I'd have to, I'd have to go here, or I'd have to mess about, and then I'd have to go here, and I'd mess about, mess about with that one. And it was just a pain. Um, and I'd have to do it again at night time, and it was just something that I, I thought, well, why can't this just do it itself? And then I got thinking, and I thought, well, I'll write an app, and I'll make some sort of sensor that just does it automatically. So uh, that's what I did. Um, now, the brightness now is automatic, and I'll just try to show you. So if I go over to this thing here and cover the sensor over, it should go dark. Yeah, do you see that it went dark? I've got a little app here as well that says 16 or 18 lux, and the monitor percentage is zero. Now I'll take it away, and notice it's gone really bright again. Notice the screen's gone bright. Let's do it again, dark, and take it away, and it's bright. So the camera doesn't really pick it up too well, but I can see it. It goes from uh, dull to very bright. Um, so it's worked. So I wrote this thing, I wired it all up, and it works. And it's actually really good. And now I don't have to mess about with brightness. I can come at night time, and my monitors will automatically be dark. I can come in the day, and the monitors will automatically be bright. So right now, it's at full brightness. And that's good, because it's sunny outside, and so on. Anyway, I looked around and I thought, well, this is ridiculous because nobody seems to have thought of this idea before. But why not? Because we have it on phones and whatever. Uh, so I thought, well, I'll definitely do a YouTube video about this. And then anyone else who wants to know how to do it, you can see how I do it and then um, go from there. So that's what this video is going to be about. first thing I'm going to show you is the wire up because this is really the crux. Um, now it's actually really easy, just disconnect this and I'll show you. It's really easy. So first of all I have a USB uh, UART serial converter and there it is. This is nothing special. It's just an ordinary converter, they're not expensive, um, it's easy. The pins that I use on this are ground, 5 volts, TXD, RXD and DTR. DTR is basically a reset pin, uh, I won't go on about that, but you can see what it is. It's just a, a cheap, um, well not the cheapest actually, but it's, it's just a cheap uh, USB to serial um, UART. Uh, I can't remember what that means, universe, no asynchronous receiver transmitter I don't know but it really doesn't matter you can see what it is maybe I'll put a link in the description I've got one of those um, and from there that powers it receives from an Arduino and transmits to it now the next thing I have is an Arduino Pro Mini yeah Pro Mini I use the A4 and the A5 pins you can see that it's a bit of a nasty job but this is one that I picked up from about, well, about five or six years ago and already had it soldered in. But the A4 and the A5 pins, you need those. They are the um, they are SCL and SDA, which is an I squared C protocol. I'm not going to go into the, the massive depths of this, but um, I'm just going to show you. So we've got that there. Um, 
we've got the transmitter and receiver um, serial stuff that goes over to the serial converter we've got the ground and VCC which is 5 volts and then rather lazily and clumsily I've got A4 paired with A2 and A5 paired with A3 in the, in the little track here which you shouldn't really do but I don't care it works and then we've got this little device here now this is a lux meter and again we've got 5 volts ground SCA and S sorry SCL and SDA so I'll show you this device this is an old device again it's something that I had lying around it's called CJMCU44003 <coughs> and it's actually a very good device now I don't know if you can still get these I presume you can um, yeah but there's the the lux meter anyway and um, in terms of wiring up it really is that simple um, it's very simple so that's the wire up is there anything else I need to show you about this um, so again I've kind of thrown this together in a very lazy way but you see D, you see here uh, DTR it doesn't actually match because uh, match because there's no DTR pin on the um, the breadboard the DTR pin is only here so what I have to do is when I flat when I come to flash the thing I just hold that together like that and then when it says done upload and I can let it go so yeah very lazy but it works so that's that I'll just plug this back in hopefully everything's right here yeah you've got to watch out for that right so we're all good there put that back and that's the wire up um, that's the wire up all right so the code next so the first thing we're going to need is a library so if you type in um, max uh, what was it 44009 I think it was there's a library here by Dan Tudos and this is the library that you should install and if we look at his github page you can see uh, the library there bit of a description you could check out his other projects and whatever Dan if you're watching the video thank you for your work because uh, it works really well for me okay so <coughs> we include the li uh, wire library which is a, a built-in library that allows us to use the I squared C protocol which is a communication protocol uh, that's between the Arduino and the little device the sensor we instantiate the library uh, that's not the correct programming term I can't remember what it is now but you get what I mean um, set up anything in setup gets run once as you may or may not know serial begin means um, it tells the Arduino look this is this is the speed that we're going to talk to you at uh, 105 200 that's what I've used um, wire begin which means um, start the wire library or start preparing for I squared C communication with the device delay half a second and then basically what this code is it's waiting for the the um, sensor library to initiate loop anything in loop loops obviously that's why it's called loop um, and what we do here is we print a line to the serial channel with the value of the current lux and that's an integer value is it actually it might not be but it doesn't matter whatever it is it prints it to serial so whatever's on the receiving end is going to receive numbers in lines uh, in other words numbers with slash r slash n um, carriage return and, and all that sort of stuff new line um, and incidentally that's a good thing to do because it means that when you receive it you know that it's the end of the message because it ends in slash r slash n anyway um, and we send that every 100 milliseconds now that's the code in entirety for flashing the Arduino so it's actually really simple um, Dan has done the hard work to be fair by writing the library um, so at this point now you've got the devices you've got them wired up you flash the Arduino when you plug it in the Arduino should be bursting off data 100 every 100 milliseconds to the recipient so that's that as far as that's concerned the next thing is that we need an app that can receive the data the looks data and do something about it so that's what I'll talk to you about next all right so we've got the device it's transmitting it's been flashed 
and you plugged it in and now you've got a COM port in Windows that you need to do something with. So this is what we're going to do. So on form load, by the way, there's the form, looks like that, very simple. On form load, we automate something, we get the ports. And to do that, we use management object searcher and we pass in this SQL here with the like. And that basically, um, oh, you need this as well, system.management. And that basically gets the COM ports and uh, stuffs them into a combo box and then we select selected index zero which means the first one and that fills this combo box here and then you select it and then click start and then when you click start we get the uh, a, a new serial port object you use the name of the COM port that we've selected the board rate which has got to match whatever we we said when we flashed it which in my case is 115200 parity non blah 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 this is all stuff generic to Arduino then before I open the port I add an event to it so on data received we add an event which is this event here data received so in other words whenever you receive some data do this now that's a really primitive way of doing it it's not a professional way of doing it it's a kind of slapdash way of doing it um, but it's okay for this it's just a, a simple project so we do that and then after we've added the event we open the port so the next thing that you would expect to receive is data so this thing sending data at, uh, 10 times a second or something like that so this is going to uh, be triggered 10 times a second or, or you would think um, now so what we do is we get the port we read a line we trim all the rubbish off the end and that becomes there that's stored in, in this uh, variable then we pass it into a double so that we can make it numeric <coughs> rather than text um, if current lux is not equal last lux in other words the lux value is changed because you don't want to be working with something if it's just repeating the same lux value in other words like oh the lux value is 20 oh okay right we'll set the monitor to this oh it's 20 okay we'll set it to this 10 times repeating the same thing it wouldn't make sense that you don't need to change the, the brightness to, to 100% when it, it's already 100% anyway so that's what that is so if the lux value has changed in other words if it's not the same as what it was on the last check then we want to do this so the last look last lux equals whatever it is now and then the brightness I've just made this this formula it's not based on anything it's completely arbitrary but it works so brightness percentage by the way is equal to the current lux multiplied by 0 0.66 take away 15 um, just very briefly the reason why I take away 15 is because th there's like a an offset um, like for example if I turn this brightness down like this I don't want it to I don't know like say say it's here see I'm, I'm turning it up and down there's a point where I don't want it to break from zero you know zero brightness but there's a point where I do want it to start so about here or so this is when I want the monitors to be you know I want the brightness going higher so that's why I've got the offset I probably didn't explain that very well there but whatever so then level looks invoke uh, invoke what it okay so when you're doing programming you have something called threads and threads are two different uh, two different tasks going on at the same time kind of now the thread that the user interface is on is different to the thread that this is running on. Um, it's probably because it's async. Does it say async somewhere? No, it doesn't actually. But regardless, there are two different threads. And one thread can't dabble with items that are being run by another thread. So you have to um, you have to invoke it. And invoke means it basically says to the other thread, oh, by the way, there's some work for you to do there. And then the other thread carries it out when it's its turn to do some. Anyway, um, <coughs> the next thing is getting folder paths. Um, so we get the folder path of an app called Twinkle Tray. And you don't need to use Twinkle Tray. You can use different ones. But I use Twinkle Tray because I just, I looked for an app that, that would deal with what I wanted to do. Uh, that I could just call and give it some arguments and it would deal whatever, with whatever it needs to do. 
So Twinkle Tray, so I've got the app. Now that app is specially designed for dabbling with monitors, let's say. So what I do, I use the command line and I say to that executable file, oh, by the way, just do this to the monitors. I give it a line of text and it goes away and does it. So I don't need to program it. I just use that app. It's not elegant, like I said, but it works. Now, I do this twice. So there's a, a for loop that runs twice. And the reason it runs twice is because I've got two monitors. So whatever I want it to do to one monitor, I want it to do the other. And that's why I do it twice. So this happens to be the argument for um, for uh, twinkle tray. You call the executable file and the arguments are dash dash monitor norm equals and then whatever the number is. So one or two and then set the brightness and the brightness is between zero and 100. And then using process, which I think is, is it system? I don't, I'm not sure, but whatever it is, Visual Studio will help you anyway. I call the process according to this. Now, if you don't do it this way, it sometimes doesn't work. So this in particular, environment not current directory, you've got to set that to whatever the folder of Twinkle Tray app is. Otherwise it doesn't work. And I haven't investigated why, but it doesn't. So that's why I do that. And so basically process wait for exit, and then it reads the result, which the result should be something like okay. So when you uh, when you send a message to an to an executable and with the argument, you want Windows to come back and say, oh, that was that was okay. And sometimes you can get a different output, like error output, that says something like error, you didn't do this correctly or couldn't find file name or something, whatever. Anyway, so for me this works, and then debug, which. Um, you just sends it to the uh, debug window at the bottom here, which you don't need. Anyway, so all in all, that's it. And that should give you something like this. Now I come to show you, it probably won't work, but we'll see. Com4 start. Right, automatically already it has lowered the, the monitors, which I don't, I imagine you probably can't see that, but let's just try it out. Yeah, yeah, look. I don't know if you can see again, but the monitors have gone dim and I put it back up and the monitors have gone high.